headed east out of Birmingham on I-20 to the Talladega National Forest. I took a roundabout path to avoid gravel roads to take Forest Service Road 500 down to the Coleman Lake Campground. It's hard to get a sense for how steep this area is. There are some sections that are smooth, but um, a lot of them, when you're going uphill, especially uh, going up or down, it tends to get washed out and it's pretty rough. It's paved down to where Colton Lake Campground is. And then um, it turns back into gravel again as you get past this section. Finally got my sight set up. Got here right at dark and I didn't really have a lot of um, daylight left, so I didn't record anything about my backing in and all that. Yeah, so uh, this is the Coleman Lake Campground. It's a National Forest Service campground. It has two loops. I think there's probably 30, 40 sites total. I'd say they're probably 75% capacity. Don't know what it'll be. This is Friday, so not really sure how, many, how long I'm gonna stay. We'll figure it out as we go. There are two loops. This is the A loop, and there's also a B loop. Uh, they're about the same size. It's uh, it's really hilly here. Uh, a lot of the sites are not very level. I had to put some blocks under the other side. That was another delay in trying to get things set up. I haven't uh, checked in and, and paid for the site yet, so I'll go up in the morning and pay. You can hear a lot of frogs down there at the at the lake. Lake's not too far from here, so tomorrow we'll uh, go down and walk around the lake, show you that some. Pine Glen is maybe five or six miles, maybe maybe a little more, six, ten miles south on that Forest Service Road 500, and it's primitive camping. It has no, no facilities at all. Main reason I came here was for Oreo, you know, I wanted to have air conditioning so uh, that's the reason I've got the full hookups and everything no sewer here they do have a dump station yeah we'll see how it goes might drive around a little bit tomorrow maybe drive down towards Pine Glen area there's a lake also not Coleman Lake but another lake uh, further south it's a little bit bigger than Coleman Lake I haven't had anything to eat so I'm gonna go inside now I think and scare up some dinner. I think Oreo's probably hungry too. Are you hungry? Hungry? Yeah. 
Okay. Well, I used the microwave, don't hate me. I stopped at Bucky's and got a brisket sandwich, so that'll be good. I saw on another uh, YouTube um, RV channel, uh, they got this little indoor bug zapper. Uh, I'm going to give it a try. It's, it's got a light. I'm, the light I don't have on, a white light, and then it's got this kind of blue bug attracting light and a zapper grid in there. Seems pretty good. Uh, it, it says it runs the zapper for 18 hours on one charge. Uh, it's a USB charge, so that'd be pretty good. The lady that I uh, that I got the, the tip from, she had little midges and, and little gnats in her camper, and it, it really did a number on them. So hopefully that'll uh, help out. So yeah, I don't know if you've ever uh, had a Bucky's brisket sandwich, but it it has, it's just loaded with with uh, beef brisket. I have to go buy a Bucky's every time I I pass one. The next morning, I got a chance to use this new percolator that I bought from Amazon. It uh, worked pretty good. It's a real blast from the past. I'm able to sit outside and uh, enjoy some coffee. And here's a view of my site. It's uh, A4. Well, it's uh, still pretty pleasant here. Underneath the trees, it's really kind of, uh, it's humid, that's the main thing, but it, the temperatures aren't too bad. There's no cell service here. This campground is, is really nice. Um, it's real hilly, uh, a lot of up and down on the road, and uh, the, the sights, I mean, this site wasn't quite level. I had to put some blocks underneath my wheels. Uh, not super deep sites. If you had a big fifth wheel, you might have trouble. A couple of sites up, there's a bathhouse. I might go up there later and take a shower this evening. Now we're headed down towards the boat ramp at Coleman Lake. There's quite a few people here. The Pinhoti Trail goes right through this area, well, not too far from here. So I might go down there, maybe putting their boat in this, in this lake. It's a really small lake. Um, yeah, trolling motors only. Right, we're going for a hike, uh, camp. Ground loop is right up there, and there's a little trail that comes out to this trail that I believe goes around the lake. Apparently they have beavers here. There's the lake right down there. There's that trail in the opposite direction. Got some benches out here. Pretty good. Oreo is walking for right now, although I'm prepared. I'm prepared at some point for her to give up and I'll have to start carrying her. It's a nice trail here. There's some really big old trees. About a half a mile down the, uh, down the road, Oreo's in her pack. Over here is the, uh, the lake, and this trail goes around it. So we're gonna we're gonna head down that way. Well, this is on the trail around the lake. There's a little swimming area over there. Some folks are swimming in. Kind of goes out to a little point over there. And heads back around this way. It's funny, uh, a lot of the signs that you see uh, along the trail, uh, interpretive signs, they, <laughs> the first one said beaver, which I suppose there might be a beaver out here, I don't know. But then everything else is like, danger! There's <laughs> had one that uh, talked about poison ivy, and another one that talked about copperheads, and uh, <laughs> yes, 
This is the danger trail. Here's the little bridge across the across the lake. I'm sure there's quite a bit of aquatic life. It's a big boy. I'm over here on the opposite side of the lake from the campground. There's a swimming area over there. And there's a little bench. I think I will take a break and uh, have a snack. Oreo doesn't like bananas. <sighs> okay, almost ready to get back on the trail. Show you the view out there. Well, we have a sign here for the Coleman Lake Loop Trail. Land and Water Conservation Fund. Looks like it was built in 2004. Or else that was when the, the funding for it was obtained. I don't know. We're getting close to the dam. There's a trail that goes back up that way. And we just came from right over there. But, uh, no camping allowed here. And it's a nice spot. But we'll proceed on, see if we can find our way across the dam, yeah. There's the dam, right down there. And there's the boat launch right over there. And this is the dam, earthen dam. You can see it goes down on the other side. And there's a weather station over there on the other side. Oh, this is the weather station. We've got a, an anometer and a wind direction. It's powered with a solar cell. A thermometer, data logging. Looks like a rain gauge. University of Alabama Research Station. I don't, I'm pretty sure it does not have any kind of connection. Someone has to come out here and download data off the data logger. This looks like a CCC wall on this side of the dam.
Well, this is the little beach area. It's got a playground and or some swings and a bathroom and a bunch of picnic tables. And then down here is your swimming area, roped off. Well, you know, I've kind of got a reputation of being a bad boy. She's kind of a bad girl. As you can tell, we're breaking the rules. Well, we're back. And there's the Oliver right over there. Well, I don't know if uh, anybody's really that interested in watching me cook, but I mean, if you're not interested, let me know. If you are, then let me know <laughs> in the comments. Uh, but I'm gonna make some chicken, uh, asparagus and pepper chicken. So I'm going to start with uh, turmeric. I'm going to go with uh, one and a half teaspoons, two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. And I'm just putting it in a gallon Ziploc bag just because I, it makes it easier to coat chicken rather than putting it in a bowl. And I'm going to put some salt in there. Put in um, two tablespoons of honey. Not that the proportions are critical here. And I'm also going to add to that a quarter cup of water. Now I'm going to add some salt to that, but we are going to add a tremendous amount of pepper. There's probably at least a half teaspoon of this pepper or more, kind of just depends on your preference. I don't want to use all this asparagus, I'm probably going to use about that much. Next, I'm going to just cut the asparagus. I'm going to try and kind of cut it at a cut it at a little angle. And you want to cut it so that the pieces are bite-sized, basically. This is a pretty easy thing to make, and I enjoy it. It doesn't require marinade or anything like that. You can just start right in cooking. So now I'm going to get my oil heated up. I'm gonna cut this chicken. This is boneless, skinless chicken thighs. Same way as I cut the asparagus, I just want it in kind of bite-sized pieces. So my bag of spices. Now I'm going to dump that into the bag, seal that up, and now when I put the chicken in I'm going to cook it for two to three minutes and I'm, I'm probably not going to, to touch it at first, I just want to let it sit there, kind of get it spread out in the pan, let it cook. The purpose of that is to sort of let the let a crust form. The good thing about this dish is that it's just one pan. Um, you don't really need a side since the asparagus is sort of the side. Okay, I think I've started to get a little bit of browning going on. But I'm going to go ahead now and flip it. It's time to put our asparagus in there. 
it's going to turn bright green, so I kind of want to just cook it until it's got some vivid color to it. Now we're going to pop in the honey glaze. Gonna let that cook and, and reduce down. And once it reduces down, then it'll turn into kind of a glaze that'll coat the chicken and the asparagus. Plate it up. Like I say, I'm gonna put about half of it. All right, there it is. I don't know if you, if you um, have to watch me eat it in order to appreciate how yummy it is. Oh my goodness. Mmm, so good. <laughs> the pepper and the honey glaze on this, it's really a winner and it's super easy. You know, you saw, you can make it in uh, one, one frying pan. We took a ride down Forest Service Road 500 and checked out Pine Glen Campground. Hung around there for a bit and then went up to Sweetwater Lake, which is about halfway between Pine Glen and Coleman Lake. Hey, I heard you want to leave this place where we grew up. This old town has put it all behind. Remember you and I would always find somewhere to hide. River's gonna cry when you're gone Where will you go? Won't you miss the ones you know? I'll be here, hanging on, waiting for your call Seems like time As a wave passing by Leave a mark in our minds to turn to memories River's gonna cry when you're gone, 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 gone River's gonna cry when you're gone, 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 gone River's gonna cry when you're gone, 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 gone River's gonna cry when you are River's gonna cry when you are River's gonna cry when you're gone close to Coleman Lake. Out this road is um, the Shoal Creek Baptist Church. Very close to the Pinhody Trail. So a lot of people that have hiked the Pinhody have come through this area. So yeah, that's the Pinhody. And this is 
553M, which I believe this is right alongside the Pinhoti to the right. And yeah, you can see the church building right up there. So we'll check out the Shoal Creek Baptist Church. Shoal Creek Missionary Baptist. This is a pretty old building. We'll go over and look at the historic marker. It's a pretty old building. And we are out here in literally the middle of nowhere. The uh, Pinhoti passes through here nearby. They do have a uh, men's room right over there. Might be able to see the top of it. Constructed about 1895. Shoal Creek Church Missionary Baptist. Quite a few pews. The pulpit. Copy of the good book here. There's a couple of windows on that side. I imagine when they have services out here, they open up those windows. I, I think they still have some services here. I do know um, a couple of people that I used to hike with uh, got married here. So I know it is, uh, available for, at least for, for them it was. But yeah, it's a cool old building. And it looks like they have an outside area over here for events. Got a big table down the middle. And then every old church, you know, has to have a cemetery. November 20th, 1909 to November 20th, 1909. Get down, get down. Laylar Saffronia, daughter of Mac and Nancy Harris. See a lot of a lot of children died. Let's see. Nancy Jane was the wife of Jack Harris. She was 30. February 1880 to March 1910. Something like that. Quite a few unmarked or well, they're marked with a headstone, but who they are may be only known to their descendants or maybe not known at all. Amanda V. Oliver, December 23rd, 1857, died March 1st, 1894. Wife of Andrew Jackson Fields.
Oh, looks like we've got some Confederate flags over here. Okay. John R. Roach. Private Company D, 22nd something regiment. Confederate States Army, November 9th, 1836, July 3rd, 1924. He lived quite a while. Quite a while. Two point eight three acre site, private property, surrounded by the Talladega National Forest. Huh. Interesting. Well. Same to you, angry crow. Yeah, Oreo, uh, Oreo and I just got back from <clears throat> cruising around uh, Talladega National Forest. We went to Pine Glen Campground. We went to Sweetwater Lake. We went to uh, the Shoal Creek Baptist Church and came back here and the campground is completely empty. I, I'm, I've got to get it through my head, you know. I'm retired. I don't have to come out here on a Friday and spend a weekend, which is what I did. And you know, the place was just packed with people. And uh, now it's Sunday night and there's hardly anybody here, which is awesome. <laughs> it's much more what I'm looking for. But I've got some pork chops. I'm gonna make a fire and I think I'm gonna cook the pork chops over the fire. So, uh, let me get started on that and we'll, uh, we'll have a good dinner. So while the fire is getting started, I'm going to um, boil some potatoes. Okay, it's a race. It's a race between the potatoes and the fire. Okay, I cut the potatoes in half and I'm gonna let them just sit here and cool a little bit. And then I'm gonna get my frying pan going but I think I'm going to work on the pork chops. Get this spread out a little bit. Let the fire do its magic on sanitizing the grill. <laughs> and once those flames kind of die a little bit, I'll toss on the chops. I'll just have to stay out here with them. and not let them get burned. Don't want to burn the outside and have the inside raw. I'm going to go ahead and flip them over. And then maybe I can move them off to the sides a little bit. And we'll try that. I hear you, Oreo. Come on. Yeah. They're starting to kind of firm, firm and dry like I like them. <laughs> okay, I've arranged them cut side down and crisp them up, see what happens. Okay, there's the Instagram picture. Uh, we'll find out if they're any good. Okay, I have to, uh, I have to say, I outdid myself. These are actually really good and I didn't overcook them. And even the potatoes are good. So there you go. Um, good little uh, good little din din. I'm saving a few little pieces for Oreo, of course, but Well, there's the 
Oliver down there. I'm uh, up here at the bathhouse. So I figured I would, there's no one else here. I figured I'd give you a tour. Yeah, it's, uh, it's clean. It's, uh, smells good. Yeah, it's, um, it's real nice in here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a shower. Oh, you know what? I forgot my, forgot my towel. I'm gonna have to go back. Oh, these are some photos I took. The next morning, uh, that was Monday, and I decided to take another hike around Coleman Lake before packing up. This is a really nice campground. With discount, it was only $10 per night. So, if you come from the east, you can get here on paved roads the whole way. The only issue I had was the campground was pretty full and noisy over the weekend. But by Sunday afternoon, most everyone was gone, and it turned nice and quiet and peaceful. Definitely consider visiting Coleman Lake if you are in the area. It is a real gem. Well, thanks for hanging out with me and Oreo, and please stay tuned for our next adventure. Thanks for watching.